We're back with our next guest, the managing partner of the Walls Torres Group. Daria Torres is here with advice on how we can all grow professionally and as leaders within our industries. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Joanne. I'm happy to be here. It's my pleasure, Daria. So you actually have worked with Fortune 500 companies, with, with large corporations, with actually even prominent universities. Yes doing strategic planning and so much more. So when people are actually involved in strategic planning, oftentimes they have this great, presumably this great plan that they think of, and then something happens, it doesn't work. Why isn't it usually, what, what's the problem? Why yeah. does, what, what, what happens that makes it not effective? I mean, I think that's a, that's a great question. Um, I, what I think about is anytime I talk to a client who is pursuing a strategic planning effort, is are you doing it for the right reasons? Uh, meaning, are you doing this because it's part of a ritual, part of a routine that you think you must adhere to every three to five years? Or are you doing it because you actually are committed to pursuing the right direction for your organization and discovering what that is through a collaborative process? The reason that most plans fail that are the right intent uh, is the habits don't change. So there are using old habits that haven't worked in the past and they're applying it to a new strategy, but the strategy may, may be brilliant, but the Absolutely. Ha the habit and it, it's, it's in the execution, right. right? So if habits don't change, the strategy just becomes an appendage, an appendage to your daily operations and is not embedded in the fabric of what you do day to day. And in essence, nothing changes. What if somebody comes to you and you ask that question and they say, we're doing it because we, we're supposed to do it. We have to do it. We're not really that committed. We're not excited. And we really don't believe in, in working with the team to kind of get that energy and get that input. What do you do? You say, stop. Do not pass go. <laughs> you say you need to establish that readiness or else the investment of time, the investment of uh, intellectual uh, energy is wasted. Uh, so it, it's important to recognize when the preconditions for success are not there. And certainly as an advisor to a client, it would not be appropriate uh, for me to engage in that kind of work if the readiness piece is not, not there. So they have to get their own readiness piece together before you step in and, and help out. Absolutely, absolutely. And there, there is uh, certainly a dynamic that can unfold where teams can be coached through that process. Uh, and certainly that would be something that if there was an appetite for it, I would be more than happy to, uh, to drive. But that's important yeah, because you, you want them to be successful. Many people say, oh, the reason his business or her business succeeded is, is she or he were lucky. Mm. So, and I'm wondering, really luck? Does right. luck have anything to do with, with business success? Well, you know, I think it ties to what your last guest was, was talking about. You asked her about this, the humility piece. Right. I think you know, what people typically refer to as luck is actually disguised by their humility. Uh, it starts with that. You have to have a kernel of humility to recognize that you're flawed. There's imperfection there. And that drives then curiosity. Curiosity to know more, to experience more. So imperfection. I think we all need to, I think we all are better off if we do recognize our own imperfections and at the same time recognize that, that there's something within each one of us that's very brilliant sure so that we have that that real balance yeah absolutely absolutely and then I, I think you discover through a process of investing growing there's a great quote by um, Benjamin Mays that says the tragedy in life is not failing it's failing to have a goal uh, so you have to recognize there's some higher level for you to reach before you even will take that first step why does persuasion factor into successful leadership well, I think any business, any business, the aim is to uh, generate additional interest, generate awareness, and you have to start with looking at what are all the different ways that I can compel someone to have that interest. Uh, there is ethos, which is credibility, right. there's logos, logic, and right. there's pathos, which is having that personal connection. And unless you're hitting on all three of those levers. So you need all. Three. Absolutely. Okay. Now, Aristotle would say you only need logos, but that's, right. we know that that's flawed. So when you're actually consulting with with, your, with the leaders, how do you help them get to that place in, in engaging all three? Well, you have to be able to translate it into something tangible. So for instance, think about um, uh, the Viagra ads. Okay. When you think about a Viagra <laughs> ad, you see millions of men use this successfully. 
That's the ethos. That's credibility. Right. So the there's so many people doing it. Why not me? Right. Absolutely. But you could come from another angle, which is the age is here for you to do what you are meant to do. That speaks to just that heart connection, the pathos piece. The logos is all the side effects and the drug chemistry. Which and, we don't, right. Right. <laughs> and which is in the small print, Absolutely. too. You don't want to look Absolutely. at that. Absolutely. So you have to consider all those angles. When you coach leaders and consult with leaders and do the, the whole, you're, you know, the, you're a strategist, what do you find is an important trait of, or even two traits of, of a strong leader? Hmm. It's so hard to narrow down just one or I two, know. but I'll do my best. Uh, I think authenticity is key. Uh, I think because people can tell if you're putting on airs, if you're putting up a facade, uh, and we can't be chameleons, right? So in, it, you hear about situational leadership, have different styles for different circumstances, and I agree with that. However, your true self must come through in all of those situations. And that ties in too, Dario, with the persuasion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because unless you're if you're not authentic people are not going to really buy into it and you're not going to be able to persuade them absolutely absolutely people can smell it a mile away yeah tell us a little bit about your background sure so I came to consulting and business through uh, first working in engineering uh, and I think it's an interesting tie to have a, a blend of experiences. Certainly that's where all creativity and innovation comes from, is the intersection of ideas. Uh, so first starting in engineering with a technical background gives you kind of an analytical approach. And uh, you have it all. Thank you so much, Darius. Sure. Power Your Life will be right back. Ahead, find out what's hot for next week. Did you ever think that you're not creative, or worse, compare yourself to someone you think has been born with all the creative genes? Get rid of those thoughts. They're just not true, and they're just another way to undervalue your own greatness. You can develop your creativity with your own personal flair and style. Here are a couple of ideas to take away tonight. Keep your curiosity alive. Look around your environment, your home, at your partner and your kids with new eyes. And above all, let go of judgment of you. Find new routes to work, new games with your kids, new recipes, new friends, and don't get stuck in the same old, same old. Shake it up a little and try out a new hobby, a new idea. When you do, you may surprise yourself and discover a new beauty or a new side to you that you really admire. Thanks for being with us tonight and on next week's show, get the lowdown on effective ways to lose weight, improve your health, and reverse the aging process. Don't miss it. Remember that you have the power to power your dreams and power your life. Thanks for joining us.